Today, I'm gonna start our episode with something different, something that was so heartwarming. I want to thank Frankie Juliana for her review, and she goes, Grateful this exists. Rowan is so informed and insightful. She does an excellent job of explaining the nuances of our culture. I love that she sheds light on our collective experience while being sensitive to how diverse it is. So much of what she says resonates with me, simply affirming in so many ways. I've learned so much. Highly recommend. Thank you so much, Frankie Juliana. From the moment you look for that link and put language together just so you could put in this review, I really appreciate it. Today in this episode, we will be exploring the concept of grief. We have been all too familiar with this feeling, especially in the few years with COVID, if you lost a loved one or heard someone lose their loved one, or just turning on the television and witnessing and experience other people's grief and loss. But rather than talking so much about it, I will also be sharing the story of Snail and Ant. Are Filipinos truly bilingual? We use the same language at home, but speak and love languages foreign to each other, together but separated. Kamusta? I'm Rowan, licensed psychotherapist mom, immigrant twice, first-generation Pinay raising my mixed Filipino-American children in America. I found that after visiting 500 Filipino homes, I continue to be a student of the culture. In this podcast, we would be seatmates in this beautiful cultural classroom. And by the way, did I tell you I need my kaping barako straight from Batangas before each class? If you're interested in learning the deep intricacies of the Filipino culture, especially as it merged with American culture, talks about trauma-informed care and deepening your Filipino relationships across generations, which includes my fave topic, Pinoy Love Languages, you're in the right place. Welcome everyone to the Pinoy Love Language Podcast. This is your host, Rowan. How are you feeling today? Which is, you know, very therapist-like question. But how are you really doing today is I, what I would like to know. I'm going to start off with the story of ant and snail. If you're getting weekly love notes from me, and if you're not, you could check the show notes and uh, subscribe to Love Notes from Rowan Weekly. I have shared my illustration of ant and snail, and I'm no artist, but basically finding a way to express and create from a very deep feelings of grief. So you would hear me flip the pages because I'm reading from this mini book that I've created. So here's the story of ant and snail. One day, snail was crying and ant was on top of a a mount hill and ant goes what's the matter snail snail in his tears goes i've lost something ant and very joyfully ant goes well don't worry snail whatever it is i'll help you find it and so they came closer together And Snail was still really very upset. And he goes, well, what I've lost can't be found. And and goes, no? Looking very surprised and confused. And Snail goes, it's a piece of my shell. And Ant goes, but your shell looks fine. I'm confused. Really now scratching his head. Snail goes on and explains further. It's the part you can't see and sometimes I want to keep hidden. And Ant, in his frustration, goes, Well, please show me these pieces and how they look like so I can help patch you up. And with just offering Ant some grace, Snail goes, You can't, Ant. The missing pieces are not meant to be patched up. Ant starts 
now getting upset. I feel helpless. I don't know how I can be of help. And Snail offers this. Just sit with me. And they're actually both on a log, sitting and watching the sun, the sky. Just sit with me, Ant. As we watch the sun together, as it rises, as it sets, and as it rises again. That's the story of Snail and Ant. I created this story and this creative expression when there was tremendous grief that I was experiencing. The feeling of loss could be tangible or intangible. You might have, let's say your home is very important to you, but you lost your home. That's a tangible. You could touch that. And more than likely, you could replace it. But usually it's the feeling that we have attached to something that creates that feeling of loss. Now, it could also be intangible if... For instance, you were a doctor from the Philippines and when immigrating to America, you have to give up that profession. And then you became, let's say, a waiter in a restaurant. Nothing wrong with being a waiter. But you might experience this intangible loss, grieving for what used to be a loss of status. Now, losing someone, that deep grief, In this story, I wanted to share that we all have that feeling of, first of all, wanting to comfort the other person, wanting to say something, wanting to fix what they're feeling. If it's unpleasant, like what Snail or Ant was saying, well, show me, we can find it, we can find the missing pieces, or show me how it looks like and I can help patch you up. And Snail is the character who's grieving in this illustration. Provided grace to Ant. Sometimes we may not have that grace. Or we often hear in social media things you shouldn't say. In all honesty, people don't know what to say. They might say something similar that they hope someone would offer them. If they were in that position, offering someone grace is very important. They would not be able to find the exact words to provide you comfort. Now, of course, Ant also has to do his homework and be a little bit more sensitive, right? You know, we can't be playing out in the dirt if you see that snail is sobbing and really grieving for a loss. And in my illustration, Ant didn't do that, but he really had a challenging time trying to figure this out and becoming upset, you know, that he couldn't provide such comfort to a dear friend. And I think that's what we want to remember as well when we are grieving that people would not say the exact thing that we need the exact recommendation because they don't know and as for the ant the lesson would be you don't know and so observe listen snail was very graceful and offered space so ant would learn that grief is not so much about stages we do go through that stages kubler ross being angry first not accepting that this had occurred up to the acceptance phase but usually rather than a stage it actually goes into waves people who have lost someone they've loved may have memories of fond memories right and that gives them a jolt of moments of joy Until that joy turns into such deep pain of longing for that person. So it goes into waves. And so in this lesson, again, I would repeat, Snail was offering Ant. Almost like a prescription. Just sit with me as we watch the sun together. As it rises, as it sets, and rises again. So not labeling our experience is just 
riding with the waves. And so if you are grieving, knowing that it comes in waves, and if you are trying to comfort someone in grief, give them space, observe, listen, just like the ant. And this is what I offer you today. Just the agency to allow ourselves to feel grief if you are grieving that this takes time and it's not something you push out of your system it's not something that you get over because we don't truly get over someone we deeply cared about who was a part of our life and it's really trying to integrate the loss and maybe even seeing the other person from a different dimension right they're still there but they're not there physically we would have to pull from our ancestral tradition you know in the filipino culture of spirit of honoring our ancestors beyond their the physical dimension that they offer so if you are someone offering comfort or would like to comfort the grieving I want to leave you just with this recommendation of just sitting with the person that is experiencing the waves and not labeling it and with that it's very important that you also be able to tend to the own pain of watching someone be in pain so I would leave you with that Thank you so much for listening at Sa Uliting 